Hi there, Victor Pross speaking to you, anarchist artist. Today, I'd like to uh, touch upon the subject of human nature. Human nature. Um, human nature is one of those tricky subjects which uh, always uh, is uh, tossed out at you when you're debating the issue of uh, society. And especially for the um, anarchist who's uh, making the case for a stateless society and speaking of uh, the freedom of the individual, it's inevitable at some point when you're uh, engaging in discussions and debates with other people that they will trot out uh, the issue of uh, human nature. I mean, you can just wait for it. If you pursue these uh, dialogues with people and you're exchanging ideas and you're debating and uh, disagreeing, uh, at some point you can count on it like the sun rising the next day that uh, somebody's going to give you uh, what they consider to be uh, you know, a pretty solid airtight uh, argument against uh, stateless society and against all of anarchism is uh, is human nature. And whenever people refer to human nature, of course, uh, as an argument uh, against your position as, uh, as an anarchist, it's always uh, meant to refer, we're supposed to just immediately get the point that, it, uh, that human nature is something ugly and sordid and atrocious, brutal, aggressive. And, uh, and, and the, that's basically what they're referring to is, uh, is, the, uh, is the uglier side of humanity, the aggressive side of humanity whenever they uh, refer to the uh, conception of human nature. Um, but uh, we, all, we, all, we all know that uh, human beings are varied and diverse and complex. We are probably one of the most complex uh, living organisms in the universe. Uh, we have the capacity to reason. We have the capacity to uh, love. We have the capacity to create uh, great works of art. We have the capacity to uh, paint caricatures. <laughs> and uh, So we have all these things that we can do. I mean, um, uh, you know, a lot of people grant the fact that uh, that uh, you know that there is good and evil, but it, it's 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 remarkable though. It's, it it's truly is remarkable that when anybody is debating the issue of a stateless society and uh, taking objections to your position as a as a capitalist or a voluntarist, that uh, it's inevitable that you will hear the argument about human nature, which is always to refer to something negative, uh, and they don't refer to the entire human template. Of uh, what the what a human being is, our capacity to love, our capacity for compassion, our capacity for altruism, in the more positive sense of the word. I was just reading the other day about this person who risked life and limb to uh, to save others from a fire, and uh, and, uh, and and a plane crash too. Uh, I've heard like in other articles about somebody else. I mean, we don't we 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 have all of these uh, things before us, but. Um, you know, we only refer to the to, to the ugly side of uh, of humanity and not to the uh, to the better side. It's uh, it's it's I find it incredibly uh, disheartening and and remarkable that we have just one eye on one thing and uh, not the other eye on the on the other part of hu humanity. Now, whenever people are arguing with the with the anarchist, um, calling for a stateless society, once they get the the basic uh, standpoint of uh, of uh, where the anarchist is coming from. Um, they're they're the ones who are truly shocked. I mean, they regard the the anarchists as some kind of uh, of uh, soft-headed, uh, big-hearted, uh, if not naive, and maybe just downright stupid, uh, for arguing for his position. Because don't they know that if we had a stateless society, if uh, there was no uh, coercive uh, restraining powers of uh, of uh, the nanny state? of the overseer, of the uh, benevolent uh, philosopher kings to overwatch us and to, to guide us, uh, two things would happen. Uh, this ugly, atrocious little monster called human nature would, would uh, break free from its restrained, uh, caged prison, kept in check by uh, government, would run amok, could just go hog wild, uh, tearing the heads off uh, little white kittens and uh, spitting down their, uh, their necks and uh, running and, and just uh, bashing and killing and hurting, maiming. Uh, here comes biology. Here comes the aggressive side of, uh, of human nature. Uh, just uh, ramsacking shops and uh, killing people and uh, 
traffic lights would be blinking off and on, and cars would be going left, right, and center, uh, driving down uh, uh, driving down the wrong lanes, uh, driving up onto the sidewalks, uh, smashing into cars, and it would just be complete uh, uh, human nature running amok. And if it's not and if it's not that, then at least if it's not that severe of human nature, it's not just human nature. Oh, bad, bad human nature. It's nothing else, just bad. If it's not that, it would just be chaotic and disorderly. Everything would be in shambles. Uh, so being, a, you know, in, in a, ca a state of chaos and disorder is not necessarily just the uh, to speak of, uh, of ethical ramifications. It's just it would speak to uh, being uh, uh, everything that has no structure. Uh, there would be uh, this power vacuum, so that's why we would have chaos without the government. So you'd have evil, and you just have basic standard chaos. So this is the argument that is presented when, uh, whenever people refer to uh, human nature. There's a lot that's packed into that word, into this argument, and this objection. And we're just, uh, it, we're not, uh, I just flushed it out, I just gave it a lot of uh, flesh on the bone. But uh, whenever people refer to this argument and use the argument of human nature, all these things are just immediately supposed to be a given. We're just supposed to, to whip in line and to understand what the person's talking about. You know, somebody would say that, ah, I think the government's evil. I think we should abolish a government. We should have a stateless society of completely free individuals. Oh, you can't have that. Well, well why not? Well, because uh, human nature. Don't you read about biology and science? Oh, okay, human nature. I guess you got a point there. Oh, so, <laughs> but um, that's supposed to end the argument, right? Oh, human nature, yeah, you got a point there. That, that, no further discussion, no definition of human nature, no uh, discussion of uh, the logical cons uh, consistency of extending the argument to its, uh, to its final conclusion, uh, no discussion as to what is meant by human nature, no discussion of anything. It's just supposed to shut down the argument uh, right on the spot. So, now the... Uh, um, one of the reasons why I think that human nature has gotten such a bad rap uh, would uh, come from two primary sources, I think. Maybe three, and I'll mention the third one. Uh, if you, This is something that I'm not you know, definitely conclusive of on. I just want to offer these ideas out and engage in dialogue and let me know what you think. But the reason why people have uh, like a knee-jerk reaction and a one-dimension take on uh, human nature is because of uh, the conception of original sin. Okay, original sin, as you know, uh, springs from Christianity and basically the idea is is that um, because of our original parents, Adam and Eve, uh, who were uh, like walking around in the Garden of Eden and uh, because of a talking snake, uh, cajoled them into eating a apple from a tree. The, it was the tree of knowledge, and God strictly had forbidden uh, eating from that tree. They did anyway at the behest and by the persuasive manipulative powers of Satan, ate from that tree and uh, defied God's authority. They became aware of uh, good and evil. It was the tree of knowledge, as I say, and uh, ever since then, uh, humankind has been tainted. And uh, that's where you get the whole uh, idea of Christ, of uh, Christ's ultimate sacrifice. He, uh, God gave his only begotten son to save mankind uh, from original sin. And uh, so this is the problem you see, is that a newborn infant, regardless of, uh, hasn't even spoken his first words yet, he has not acted in the world, made his uh, made his uh, actions known by uh, conducting himself as an adult, making choices that impact and infect himself and others. He is not yet a moral agent, but yet, at birth, he is tainted with original sin, uh, which has a reflection upon human nature, okay? So uh, there's a lot of people who, when they speak of human nature, don't necessarily uh, present it that way. But I think that because of uh, Christian cosmology, that um, it has had an impact on how we regard ourselves and our fellow human beings. Now, a uh, second uh, school of thought would come from Freud, uh, who did a great deal of uh, study in, um, in uh, human behavior, of course, and uh, he had this whole uh, idea of, uh, of the id 
the ego and the superego. I don't want to draw this out too much, but basically the id is just really a secularization of original sin. It's something that's in us, it's our baser instincts, and it's held in check, and there's a correlation in a, or a, a battle between the id and the superego and the ego. Uh, you can look all this stuff up without me diving into it, but basically the you know id is the thing here, id, which is, to, as far as I'm concerned, is the secularization of original sin. And uh, so the uh, so basically oh and then we have uh, Darwin of course um, uh, Darwin has been uh, I think mis grossly misrepresented in the sense of that uh, you know that we came from um, uh, that we came from uh, monkeys and apes to put it in the in the vernacular of how people understand the evolutionary uh, theory we have a common ancestry uh, to apes we don't directly descend from apes. But, uh, but it's, uh, you know, social Darwinism and uh, might makes right and um, the, uh, what is that, the, the other phrase that people refer to, uh, um, the, the fit, uh, survival of the fittest. Right, so and that's uh, our baser instincts coming to the fore, right, you know, clubbing the other caveman over the head for the uh, slab of meat. Or, or for the woman, right? So it's, you know, you have uh, social Darwinism and you have the id and you have uh, original sin, all of this uh, polluting the very conception of human nature and that's why people cannot even hear the, the even hear the words human nature without thinking of something uh, very negative. They completely dismiss everything else from the consideration, from the human panorama, the human template of what we're, well, of what we're all about, which is uh, much more complex and much more varied than uh, this uh, ugly presentation. So that uh, that basically that that is the argument that's presented. We have to take heed of the fact of human nature, and that's why you see uh, this necessitates government. So that is what I want to talk about in the next video: is to uh, pinpoint the uh, logical errors in this type of argument. Thank you for listening. It's Victor Pross, anarchist artist. Pop goes the culture.